Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Muriel. I'm a food photographer, recipe developer, and content creator. And on this channel, I talk all about food photography, vegan recipes, as well as personal growth. And on today's video, we're doing something a little bit different that we've never done before. You know how in the past, I've shared with you a little bit of my editing process? Well, today I'm going to do that, but on top of that, I'm going to be sharing with you the files that I'm going to be editing. That way, you'll be able to follow along with my editing and do those exact same edits on your own, on your computer through Lightroom. So if you're interested in seeing my process and following along with my editing, make sure to watch this video from beginning to the end. This is the image I will be editing today, this glorious French toast stack topped with poached pears, whipped cream, and a little bit of powdered sugar. The link to download this image is actually in the description below. So if you want to go ahead, pause this video, download the image and open it up in Lightroom. And one option would be to either continue playing this video in the background as you edit along with me, or split your screen in two, have Lightroom on one side and this video on the other side so that you can kind of see what I'm doing as I'm doing it and edit along with me. So let's jump into Lightroom and get started. So here we are in Lightroom Classic. I personally always use Lightroom Classic over Lightroom CC just because I find that their interface is a little bit more intuitive. And also Lightroom Classic is the program that I learned first. So I'm a little bit more comfortable with it. However, I'm sure that you would get very similar results if you did all this editing in Lightroom CC. One last thing before we jump to editing the image, I wanted to bring your attention to this little histogram panel right here. As you can tell, I shot this image with my 50 millimeter f1.8 at an aperture of f1.8 and at a shutter speed of 1 over 60. If you're interested in learning about the lenses that I use in my food photography, make sure to check out my video where I explain all the lenses that I have in my collection and what I use them for. I'm going to link it above here as well as in the description below. So let's get to editing. If you've been following me for a while, you know that the first thing I do is I jump into the basic panel and that's where I start my editing. At the moment, I'm pretty satisfied with the temperature and the tint of this image. So I don't think I'm going to play with that right away. However, I'll definitely bring up the exposure because I feel like this image is definitely on the darker side, which we could actually see on this histogram because it's going towards the left. So let's increase the exposure. I feel here seems pretty good at 0.90. We'll bring down the highlights just to bring back more information right here in the whipping cream. We'll increase the shadow as well to brighten up the darker areas of the image, bring back the detail. Now we're going to add back in a little bit of contrast by increasing our whites and dropping our blacks. Already, if I show you the before and after, you can already see that the image has started to come alive. So now let's jump into the hue saturation and luminance panel. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about how playing with the hue, the saturation and the luminance affect the different colors in an image, make sure to watch my video where I talk about moody photography as well as bright and airy photography. In that video, I also show how I edit my pictures, but I go in a lot more details in explaining how playing with those sliders can actually affect the colors of your image. So I'm not gonna go too much over it in this video because I've already explained it quite in depth in the past. So, I really like the way the red looks on this image. It already looks very vibrant and it's red enough. I don't think I would want to make it more red, like way too red, like purplish, or uh, I don't want it to be orange. So I'm just going to drag it a little bit towards the left at minus six, and this looks good. Next, with the orange, I'm, I want it to be a little bit more yellowish, so I'm just gonna increase it by just a touch to plus seven. In terms of the yellow, first of all, let's try and locate where the yellow is actually in the photo. Is it more uh, on the French toast or the eucalyptus in the back? So if you just click on the yellow slider and drag it back and forth towards the right and then towards the left and right and left, you can tell that the yellow is mostly in the eucalyptus in the back, but also on the French toast. 
I would want the yellow to, to be a little bit more on the orangey side. So I'll bring it right here to minus 23. Looks good. Then in terms of the green, let's locate it again. As you can tell, the green is really in the eucalyptus. So I want the green to pop out a lot more and to be a little bit cooler than what it already is right now. So I'm going to drag the slider all the way to plus 66. In terms of the aqua, again, let's locate where the aqua is in the photo. I don't, I don't see much. So I'm just gonna leave it at zero. As for the blue, oh yeah, so the blue is really in the shadows. I think I like the blue being more towards the cyan color. So I'm just going to bring it to minus 30. I think this looks nice. And let's see about the purple. Yeah, again, the purple, it, the purple is more in the highlights here. So we'll bring it just a little bit towards the red at plus 22. Then with the magenta, let's see again where it is. I don't really see a difference in terms of if I move the slider back and forth, what it changes. So I'm just going to leave it at zero right in the middle. Let's jump to saturation. All right, this is where we can make the reds really pop even more. I think I'm going to increase it. Let's put it at 41. I think 41 looks good. Then in terms of the orange, I don't want it to be too, too saturated. I find the saturation is already really good on the orange, so I'm just going to increase it by 12. As for the yellow, the eucalyptus in the back doesn't look as good as I would want it to be. So. And I think one of the reasons is because I find that it's a little bit yellowish. So I'm going to decrease the saturation by quite a bit and see what happens. Yeah, see, I find by decreasing it to minus 60, this looks really good. The eucalyptus is a lot cooler and I find that it looks much better on the image. Then in terms of the green, I find that the eucalyptus in the back looks good, but this eucalyptus in the front is a little bit too saturated and I find it distracts a little bit. So I am going to decrease the saturation of the green to minus 55. Yeah, this is good for me. Then in terms of the aqua, let's see, how does it change the image when we slide it back and forth? Not much. As we remember when we were dragging the slider of the aqua in the hue panel, we could see that there's not much aqua in the photo. So there's no point in us really playing with that. However, there was some blue. So let's see if we increased uh, the blue by a little bit, what it would do. I think I'm actually going to decrease the saturation of the blue to this point. I think this looks good. In terms of purple, let's see. No, I don't want, I definitely don't want to increase it because as I drag it towards the right, I see what it does. If you bring it to the right to a hundred, there's, there's way too much saturation. So I think I'm actually going to do the opposite. I'm going to decrease it. I'm going to put it to minus 29. Then magenta, when we played with the hue, there was no magenta, so we're not going to play with that. Let's jump to the luminance panel and play with that. So do we want the reds to be brighter or darker? I think brighter. <laughs> the brighter, the better. I like it around plus 40. I think it looks really good, super vibrant. And then, ooh, we should definitely increase the luminance of the orange because do you see how it increases the detail in the French toast. So I think around the plus 31 looks really nice. In terms of the yellow, I would just increase it again just by a little bit because I see that it's actually increasing the brightness right here and I find that looks really nice. So I'm going to put it at plus 61. In terms of green, again, the green is in the eucalyptus. Let's see. I think I'm going to decrease it to minus 100 because if you look in the upper left corner of the eucalyptus, as you increase it, it makes it to plus 100, makes it very bright. So I want to decrease it at minus 100 so it doesn't distract too, too much. Then the aqua we're not going to play with. The blue, I think I'm going to decrease the blue to minus 85. And the reason for that is if you look on the image, when I drag the slider to plus 100, look at the backdrop uh, in the foreground at plus 100 and then minus 100. At minus 100, the little white dots on the backdrop kind of blend in better. 
So that's why I want to keep it more on the lower end of the spectrum so that there's not too much detail on the backdrop and it doesn't distract too much from the French toast stack. Then in terms of magenta, I'm going to keep it at zero because it doesn't make that much of a difference on the image. All right, so this is good. Now let's go into detail and play with the sharpness. I'm going to zoom a little bit into my image so that I see the part that I want to be sharpest, which is the first layer uh, starting from the top of the French toast stack. I'm going to click option on my keyboard, have my finger on the masking slider and slide until 90. And I'm going to put my sharpening to 67. <laughs> 67 seems just right. I think there's enough sharpness and it's really in the, ba in the area that I want the most sharpness to be in because of the masking tool. In terms of lens correction, we are going to click on the profile if you're not already on it. Check remove chromatic aberration and check enable profile correction. Again, I go into a little bit more details about these two settings in the previous video where I edit a moody and a bright and airy photo. So if you wanna learn more about those two functions, make sure to check that video. It is linked in the description below, as I've mentioned before. Now, finally, I'm going to go into the effects panel and I think I want a little bit of a vignette effect on this image. So let's play with that and drag the first slider, the one that says amount, all the way to the left to minus 22. And I'm gonna put the fed, I'm going to increase the feather because I find it's a little bit too obvious here that there's a little bit of a vignette. So I'm going to incre increase the feather to 94. And I think I wanna go back and decrease the vignette to 12. And lastly, I think I'm going to move the midpoint to zero because I find that this allows the gradient of the vignette to be a little bit smoother, which I find looks better. All right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the tone curve. As mentioned in previous videos, I always put three extra dots on my curve and I bring down the shadow dot. So when I bring it down, it brings the input to 68 and the output to 57. And then I'm going to play with the, the fourth dot on the curve, which is the highlight dot. And I'm going to bring that one a little bit higher, but just like a touch. And the input becomes 192 and the output is 199. I think that's good. Then I think I want this image to be a little bit more matte. And in case you don't know how to do that, it's really easy. You basically take the last dot on the left corner at the bottom, <laughs> the black dot, and the black point on the curve and you actually drag it directly upwards just a little bit and then it creates kind of this matte effect and the input at this point is zero and the output is 16. all right so this looks good now that i look at this image i find that the saturation of the orange is a little bit too high so I'm going to go back into the hue saturation and luminance panel, click on saturation and bring down the saturation of the orange to minus 15. I think this looks better. If you want to see what was the effect of the changes that we did in the hue saturation and luminance panel, you see how there's a little switch in the upper left corner of that panel. Just click on it and then the colors are going to go back to how they were originally. And then if you click on it again, it's how our edits have affected the colors of the image. And you can see we've done a good job, my friends. We've done a good job. All right, so now that this is done, I think I wanna go back into the basics panel and play with that a little bit more. In this case, I think I want to increase a little bit of texture because I want the little crust of the bread to come out a little bit more than it is at this point. We're going to increase the texture to plus 22. 
and this looks really good it really makes the bread look really crusty and also it uh, highlights the texture of the powdered sugar which is really nice and one last thing that i want to do in terms of coloring of the shot is that i want to decrease the saturation of the overall image by a little bit so we're going to drag the saturation to minus six and i think i really like this look i like the fact that it's the image is not too saturated and the star is really the pear. The pear is really popping out and it looks really good. So now let's play with the details of the shot and we're going to do that with first of all grabbing the adjustment brush. So first things first, I want to bring back a little bit of detail on the right side of the French toast because it's a little bit too dark to my liking. I'm going to increase the shadows to plus 48 and I'm going to paint over it. And I think I'm going to increase it a little bit more even. I'm going to put it to 100 because I really want that part of the French toast to be much brighter. I'm actually going to increase the exposure to plus 40. And I want to bring back a little bit of detail. So I'm going to increase the texture to 15. Looks really nice. I'm going to grab the brush again. And I'm going to play with the left side of the French toast stack. I want the texture to be even more intense. <laughs> That's my personal taste. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to increase it to 29 and I'm going to paint over the crust of the French toast and over the raspberries as well, as well as the raspberry that is on the right side and brushing it on the pear on the top. Perfect. Then you can press done. And we're going to do another adjustment brush, this time for the pair at the top. I'll increase the shadows a little bit to 30. And I'm just going to paint over that pair. Perfect. So far, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to play with the other elements first, and then I'll come back to the stack if I need to adjust something. I'm going to click another time on the adjustment brush. And this time, I want to decrease the saturation and the brightness of the pair that is in the background over there. So we're going to do that by bringing down shadows to minus 50. And we're going to paint over the pair that is in the background. And see, that's not enough. So we're going to bring down the shadows to minus 100. And we're going to also decrease the highlights. Not too much. Minus 33. And finally, I think I want to decrease the saturation to minus 20. Minus 20 seems good. And now I feel like the pear is a lot more in the shadows and is a lot less saturated and I find that looks really nice. One last thing that I'm going to do with the adjustment brush again, I'm going to decrease the highlights to minus 91 and I'm going to paint over that strip of light between the French toast stack and the pear in the back just so that it's darker. Perfect. So now let's play with a graduated filter. We'll click on it, make sure to reset our settings. And then we drag it from the top to the point where it touches the pair that is the main subject. And we're going to decrease the highlights here to minus 50 looks good. And we're going to create another graduated filter, drag from the bottom upwards towards the plate and we're going to keep it at minus 50 as well. One more graduated filter. <laughs> we're going to do that by creating a graduated filter that comes from the left side of the image and we'll drag it until basically the middle of the image and to that one we'll put highlights to minus 35. That looks really nice. It adds a lot of drama to the shot. You know I love drama. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know how much I love to add drama to my food photography. And actually, every single Thursday on Instagram, I share some tips in my series called Tip Thursdays with Muriel. So if you want to learn a couple of tips and tricks uh, relating food photography, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm at Muriel Banakisa. Shameless plug-in. <laughs> okay, let's get back to our shot. I think I'm going to add a radio filter this time and I'm going to create the filter around the French toast stack. I'll click O to see what part of the image is concerned. 
with this filter and I can tell that it's not the pancake slice but everything around it. I'm going to expand my circle so that most of the pancake stack does not include the radiated filter and what we'll do is we will decrease the shadows to minus 65. I'm just going to bring the circle a little bit closer in so that it, it blends a little bit more smoother with the dark and the light. Then we'll create a second filter. This time we'll put it around the pancake again. By pressing O again, you'll see what part of the image is going to be affected. This time I don't want what is outside of the circle to be affected, but rather what is inside the circle. So as you scroll down on the right hand side, you can click on invert. By clicking invert, basically everything that's inside of the circle is going to be affected by your edits. And this time we'll increase the shadows a little bit to 45. We'll drop the highlights just a touch by to minus 12, but we'll bring back the whites to plus 12. And we'll increase the texture plus 15. Well guys, I think this is looking good. Let's see what it looks like in full screen. You can do that by pressing F, by the way. I really like it. I think one thing that I would change is I would make the strip of the backdrop that you can see that is between the French Hill stack and the other pair in the background. I think I wanna make that a little, a little bit darker. I just find it's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to go back in with an adjustment brush, put it to minus 100 shadows, and I'm just going to paint over that strip and see it's not dark enough. So let's bring down the blacks. Make sure if ever you see that it, it doesn't blend really well to just paint a little bit on top of the napkin and that's fine. By the way, I brought back down the blacks to minus 21. Sorry, I didn't mention that. And the exposure I'm going to bring down as well to minus 31. And I think this looks really nice. Yeah, I like it. I think it looks good. One last adjustment brush. I just want the right side of the pair to be a bit brighter. So I'm going to actually increase the exposure to, to 10. Using the adjustment brush, I'm going to paint on top of that part. So the right side of the pair is being painted right now. <laughs> we'll increase the whites to plus 60 and the texture to plus 30. Oh yeah, I like it. I think it looks good. I, look, I think it looks really, really nice. So that's it, you guys. This is our final image. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks beautiful. The French shows looks delicious, super crusty, super moist, topped with that gorgeous red pear. I think it's great. I hope you had as much fun as I did editing this photo. I hope also you followed along and if you did, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below if you like this format, if you enjoyed following along with me and also if it was clear enough because I'd love to do these types of videos more in the future because I remember in my own personal journey into photography and editing, I would watch a lot of these types of videos about editing, not necessarily food photography but just photography in general. And these videos I always found were super, super helpful and really improved my skills in terms of editing. And even if you didn't follow along with me, let me know in the comments below if you did enjoy this format, if you liked watching this video. And also make sure everyone to share, like, subscribe if you like this type of content. And on that note, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll see you very, very soon.